didn't have that. They got to touch each other. <laughs> they have to touch each other. Does that work? The bond has to go through all of it. So I'm guessing the bonds have to go through all of these. Come on, Oh, that was my idea. Yeah. So the hard pool is right now. Getting closer to the river. Go ahead. Wait, these have to touch, right? Okay. I don't know why these. The distance between the centers of oxygen atoms has to be equal in all directions. Oh, 
touching. I know that the table at that distance, that's the hypotenuse. And it's different from this. We all get one of the
because we have a lot of information to get on this big sheet. And the reason I like to do it this way is because I want it all in one place. So when you look at it, you're not looking back and forth between pages. I want you to think about this as being all in one big process. Okay? So we're going to be using different parts of this for different parts of our notes today. We are starting out up here in the top left hand corner. And we are going to draw that structure that we just built. The way we're going to draw that structure is we're going to draw it as if we're looking straight down on it. Okay? We're going to draw it first. We're going to write up the chemical formula so we get this part done while it's fresh in our minds. And then what I want to do is I want to set the stage for how we're going to think about the rest of this stuff. Okay? So if you look straight down on your structure, straight down from the top, If we are looking straight down on it, the first thing we see is we see that styrofoam ball at the top, correct? And then sticking out from it on three sides, we see parts of the other styrofoam balls and we don't see the gummy bear, correct? Okay, so this is how we're going to draw this. You want it smaller than? Uh, I'm going to have you draw about the same size. I'm drawing mine. So we're going to draw the center, top center styrofoam ball, like that, just a circle. And then we're going to draw the three other styrofoam balls sticking out. One there, one here, and one over here. Okay? And then in some other color, we're going to draw in where the silicone atom really is sitting. So it's sitting inside here, right? So are we all drawing it in the top left corner? Yeah. Yep. We're all drawing the top left corner. And then we're going to label these. So this is like our silicone. Why are we chatting so much? This is like our silicone atom right here. Put an arrow to that, and I'm going to write that side. And silicone is a plus four, correct? C. So plus four. And the red ones on mine, each one of those is an oxygen. And each oxygen is a minus two. Over 99% of the rock and minerals that come out of a volcano or that cool in a magma chamber underneath the volcano or that come out of a mid-ocean ridge or rift system someplace are built on that structure. A huge volume of the earth is built on that structure. Everything with the exception of the liquid core, the inner core, and the very crustal surface is built on that structure. The entire mantle and most of the crust are built out of that thing. Okay? The thing has a name. It is called a silicone oxygen tetrahedron. Silicone for the silicone that's there, oxygen for the oxygen that's there, tetrahedron. The, the prefix tetra means T-E-T-R-A-H-E-D R O N. The tetrahedron part means four. And if you look at your structure, there's a side here, a side facing you, correct? Yeah. 
There's a bottom side. There's a side facing to the back in your right. There's a side facing to the back in your left. That's four sides, right? That's the tetrahedron part, okay? Let's do the charge on this thing. So the silicone has a charge of plus four, and there's one of those, right? The oxygens have a charge of minus two, but there are four of them. So overall, there's a charge of minus eight, correct? So for the net charge, we have a minus four net charge. Okay? Is everybody with me? Chamber. We're going to call this a pipe. 
Yeah, it's kind of like the stomach and an esophagus. And that's actually another really good analogy that we'll get to in a little while if we want to be kind of gross. Okay. okay, inside, oh, this, by the way, is the magma chamber. And inside this magma chamber is the? Magma. That's pretty hard, man. Okay, Are you videotaping yourself? I'm videotaping this class because this stuff is hard and you guys are going to want to look back at this video. Oh. So when you want to review it, you can go back and review it. Okay? Oh, hi, Mom. Yeah, hi, Mom. I know. Inside the magma chamber is the magma. Here's the thing about magma. When we studied minerals, we learned that some ores come from magma chambers, and it's some things like silver and gold and sulfur. But that is a very tiny, tiny portion of the magma. In fact, the magma that's in a magma chamber, whether it's under a volcano in Hawaii, under a volcano in Africa, under a volcano in Alaska, under the mid-ocean ridge, in the middle of the Pacific, the Indian or the Atlantic Ocean, pretty much the same composition. And it's made of only eight different elements. And here's what the eight elements are. That one and that one. We already know two of them. Silicone and oxygen. And the other six are magnesium, iron, aluminum, calcium, sodium, there are only eight elements that make up almost all of the silicate rocks, okay. which make up almost all of the crust and all of the mantle. And other interesting places like the moon, which is kind of hoping to. So those eight elements are going to make up all these igneous rocks that we're looking at. It's just going to be different combinations of them and different amounts of them, different proportions of them. Okay? You don't have to worry about all the other things like silver and gold and platinum. They're in there, but there isn't much in there of them. There are some other interesting things in here, like some carbon, some sulfur, and those are some of the things that cause volcanoes to erupt. Okay? But for right now, we're just going to consider this stuff sitting in the volcano. It's in the form of magma right now. And we're going to think about what happens if this stuff, these eight elements that are all melted together, they start to cool down, what happens to them? Okay. It's either two or three. It depends on what it's going to end up on. It's too much charge in it. That's a good question. Okay. We're going to get up in about two minutes and we're going to go back to the back of the room and we're going to do a little role play. Oh, jeez. But before we do that, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about the characteristics of solids and the characteristics of liquids. So down here in the bottom right, or the bottom left corner, right down here, we're going to write solid, and we're going to write liquid. So let's go back to Kev 1, when you guys learned about phases. What were the characteristics of a solid? Atoms were tightly packed. Perfect. And they vibrate in place, right? Chemistry was kind of easy the second time I took it. <laughs> hey, if you keep talking, that's cool. Excuse me, bitch. Yeah. 
Maybe this happened before you got here, but my warning was we're not doing any off task stuff today because okay. we can't take our brains off of this. Right. Okay. Can you say the after plate was that the atoms vibrate in place. Oh, okay. So while they are locked together, just like these are now locked together by the toothpick, they're actually just shaking a little bit. Okay? What about a liquid? How is a liquid different? Uh, they have more room. They're spread apart. Yeah. They're spread apart. They have they more room. They, the atoms bounce, they off bounce off each other. They flow past each other. So is there more motion than there is in a solid? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's atoms flow past each other. And they move. They flow means. What about the level of energy of the atoms in a solid compared to a liquid? They have less energy in a solid. There's more kinetic energy in a liquid because they're moving around, right? So we'll say more kinetic energy. Okay? liquid to solid. Magma chamber underneath the volcano. It's very hot. 
But out along the edges, is it as hot? No. Why not? There's less kinetic energy than there is in the middle because what's over here? Colder rock. So we've got a gradation from cool or solid to warmer to hot. So liquid, solid. Okay? Here's my other question. If I take a ceramic cup and I put a bunch of sugar in it and I start to heat it up, will the sugar melt at the same time the cup melts? No. What's going to melt first? The sugar. Why? Here's why. It just has a different melting temperature. That's all. If you look at the periodic table, there are some periodic tables that actually tell you the melting temperature of each one of the elements. Elements have different melting temperatures. If different rocks are made up of different elements, do different rocks have different melting temperatures? Yes. So we've got to go with that idea. Okay. You guys ready for organized chaos? Sure. It's going to be rather chaotic. I need three people who would like to remove themselves from the chaos and be our, our accountants today. If you want to be an accountant, let's see, which three people am I going to put? Louis, Faiza, and Mark. Else. The three of you, I would like you to grab a Chromebook and I would like you to situate yourselves at three different tables back there. You will go into your email and find the spreadsheet I shared with you. Okay. Other people. I need another person who will be an accountant. Actually, two more people who will be accountants. Mitch and Simon, wait, wait, wait. What are they talking about? you're going to be counting up things for us. You don't want to do that? Simon, one other person? Okay. The two of you, I would like you to go in the back. Good job. The rest of us, we are either atoms of specific elements or we are, I'm going to call them some molecules. Okay, even if you're back here in the back, you guys, you still have to pay attention because you're part of understanding this material, okay? So I know you're trying to do something, but you're still paying attention. I'm going to call us sub-molecules. That's not really a term. It's a term I kind of made up. And it's like, do you remember polyatomic ions? Yeah. Remember those? They were multiple atoms that were bonded together that had a charge overall. These are kind of like that, but these aren't official polyatomic ions. Put it away or take it away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each one of you guys mm -hmm. one of these cards. And it has a different portion of a rocks, of a minerals formula on it. Okay? And then I'm going to tell you the rules. But for right now, you are part of the magma. So you're going to go to the back corner. You're going to be the magma chamber. So that area around the table back there is going to be our magma chamber. Okay? So we are now inside here. All right? You guys okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Come back.
In other words, if you have a plus 4, you're looking for a minus 4. If you have a plus 7, you're looking for a? And if you have a minus 2, you're looking for a? Plus 2. Okay. So we all got that part. The other thing you're looking for is you have to have the same melting temperature. So you're also looking for the same color paper. So a plus 4 cannot bond with a minus 4. Plus 4 on pink paper can't bond with a minus 4 on blue paper because you don't have the same melting temperatures. You're not ready to bond. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you guys are you need to flow around and you need to bond yourselves. Same color, same number, opposite charge. Okay, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Here's the thing. The blue ones have already bonded. Because they have the highest melting temperature. And it's starting to cool down. So at the highest temperature, they're already bonded. There they are. They're bonded yeah. together. <laughs> Show us what your molecule looks like. All right, MGFE, that's the metal. Do we, do, we do we put that in front of or in back of the SiO4? In front of. In front of it. So it's MGFE and then the SiO4. Does that SiO4 look familiar? Yeah, it's the bond that we made on the board. That's what we made up front. So now we've got this mineral. This mineral is called olivine. Okay? So we have one set that's going to come out. So our accountants, Mark and who else was my counter? Me. No, no, no. Yeah. Mark and, and Shiza, come over here for a second. You need to, come around front. You need to communicate to those people on the spreadsheets, and they need to check and make sure they get the answer right. You need to communicate how many magnesiums, how many irons, how many silicones, and how many oxygens are here. So you guys agree on that, and then go tell them. Okay, so what are we going to tell them? Okay, so one of my accountants, just one of you guys, needs yeah. to type in under magnesium, mm -hmm. minus 2, under iron, minus 2, under silicone, minus 1, and under oxygen, minus 4. That's how many we're taking out. Under silicone, minus 1? Silicone, minus 1, oxygen, minus 4. So that's going to be your job. You have something bonded. You're going to communicate to one of the reporters how many of each goes out. Okay? Your job is done. All right, now, here's the thing. The rest of us are still liquid, correct? Yeah. If we take a solid rock and we put it into a liquid, what's it probably going to do? Sink to the bottom. So think about this. Is this possible? You're inside this magma, inside the magma chamber underneath the volcano, Salma. And there are now little bits of olivine mineral made up of magnesium, iron, silicone, and oxygen that are floating around in the magma, but they're dense and they're heavy, and they start to precipitate down towards the bottom of the magma chamber, correct? They're not involved in the magma anymore. Remove yourselves from the magma chamber. All the blues are dispensable. Just the ones that have bonded. They are now minerals by themselves. Do I have any other blue ones which have bonded? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so my accountants, where are you? Yeah. Come over here and get this information, how many of these atoms we're taking out of the melt. Where's my other two that are bonded? Two magnesium. Um, two. What do you guys should do? Uh, these guys? Okay. Somebody else. 